hundred years have passed since the tyrant Dong Zhuo burned the capital of Luoyang to the ground, igniting the events of the Three Kingdoms period. Long after the fires of Redcliffe, the master strategist Sima Yi usurps the Cao family's fragile grip on China's throne, paving the way for his grandson Sima Yen to form the Jin Dynasty. The year is now 291 CE, and after a quarter of a century in control, Sima Yen has passed away, leaving the Sima family in an intense power struggle. With the emperor's heir unfit to rule, figures of power wax and wane and a power vacuum stands to be filled by eight ambitious princes, all descendants of the legendary Sima Yi. Eight Princes is a brand new chapter pack for Total War Three Kingdoms, set 100 years after the Han was disassembled, bringing an entirely new starting situation to your campaigns in ancient China. With eight new playable factions, this DLC will introduce some very different playstyles to those looking for a new challenge. Not to mention new technologies, a whole host of new units being added to the Eight Princes campaign, and these four being added to the main campaign as well, including the terrifying Heavy Cataphracts. These heavily armoured horses can break lines with the sheer weight of their charges, a four-legged iron wrecking ball. In Eight Princes, players will be tasked with navigating the complex political web of the Jin Dynasty's downfall. By raising their prestige, they'll either be able to declare themselves emperor or take charge as regent, and once the other major powers on the map have been completely decimated, claim ultimate victory. In this gameplay preview, I'm going to be showing you a few of the interesting new playstyles on offer in Total War Three Kingdoms Eight Princes. Summa Jong rules with an iron fist and ensures complete authority over his holdings by maintaining a centralized government. By keeping a large amount of control, Summa Jong's unique faction resource, players will be able to increase noble support and reduce the effects of corruption across their faction. Whenever a battle is lost or one of your court nobles is assigned a ministerial position, your control starts to diminish. To regain it, players will have to strip their ministers of their titles or show their dominance by besting enemy armies in battle. This will certainly be helped by the entirety of Sima Jong's retinue being imbued with terror. Another tool in Sima Jong's arsenal is his unique assignment, only available to the leader, advisor and heir of your faction. By micromanaging a certain commandery, your characters bring a massive increase to profits and reduce corruption. But with a cost to your control, you must weigh up the benefits, especially when your faction leader spends time away from the battlefield in exchange. Summa Leong stands in a difficult position. Having placed the now tyrannical Empress Dowager into her place of power, he has been betrayed and named as a traitor to the Jin. With his name in tatters, Summa Leong must regain his jurisdiction, his faction's unique resource. Summa Leong can only effectively manage a certain amount of counties, dependent on his jurisdiction. By seeking the cooperation of other factions, you can increase your jurisdiction and therefore the maximum size of your domain, whilst also giving you a vassal to give territories to, should you ever stretch. Summa Leon cannot rely on rapid, aggressive expansion to gain power in his campaign, but must instead build a portfolio of subordinates to do his bidding, keeping them amply fed with new territories, which combined with a whole host of enemies bearing down upon him from the start of the campaign, makes Sima Leong one of the most difficult starts in Eight Princes. Sima Ying is a master delegator, and although he was never known for his wisdom or intelligence, he sits comfortably in the hearts of his people. As the Prince of Chengdu, he also becomes the first playable faction in Total War Three Kingdoms to start in the western basin of the map, allowing players to approach their conquests from a whole new angle. Sima Ying will flip the faction council on his head, with his unique ability allowing every single member of his court to imbue their faction-wide benefits on his lands, without needing to sit in the positions of Prime Minister, Faction Leader or Heir. Players will have a veritable chocolate box of faction-wide abilities to apply to their court, but they'll have to watch out for those filling new positions that have bad leadership qualities, as Sima Ying certainly won't be doing any of the work. Sima Lun earned his title of the Usurper Prince when he historically deposed the Emperor and claimed the capital as his own. The records show that Sima Luan only lasted a mere four months before his scheme to become Emperor fell apart. But with the tools at his disposal, the player may be able to rewrite history and realise Sima Luan's true potential. As a schemer and plotter, Sima Luan will have access to the unique faction resource of subterfuge, which can be spent on proxy wards and diplomatic deception in the vein of the masterful Cao Cao. 
Alternatively, players can hoard those points of subterfuge to increase the effectiveness of their undercover networks, empowering Simulun's many spies embedded in enemy factions. Just in case his schemes do fall apart, Simulun will be able to fall back on his devastating unique cavalry, including his own unique unit of cataphracts, boasting even more defense than their already heavily armored counterparts. Total War Three Kingdoms 8 Princes is available to pre-purchase now for 10% off until it releases on the 8th of August. So make sure you grab it quickly, and thank you very much for watching this gameplay preview.